everyone it's Lisa welcome back to my channel if you're not already a subscriber make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button and click that bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video today's video is going to be the stamps of life August card kit 10 cards one kit video so I'm so excited to share with you the contents of the card kit and then make 10 cards so let's take a look and see what is included in the August Card Kit Club shipment. So you get these cardstock colors. You get cherry, mint, chip, ocean, green apple, grape, strawberry, tangerine, and sunshine, and then four powdered sugar cardstock pieces. Now the paper pad says that it should be the cantaloupe instead of the cherry and the banana instead of the sunshine. And those are the ones that I got with my card kit. It might be different with yours. Now these are the cute little birds that correspond to the club set for the month. So you can actually use your shadow dies to die cut these out. So you can make really quick, super easy cards, quick cards, so that you don't have to worry about stamping and coloring and all of that. You can just use your die cuts. And there are a total of 24 sheets in this paper pad. You get two of each sheet that you see here. And all of the colors in the paper pad correspond to the cardstock colors that came with your kit. You also get this idea card for inspiration. And you get these palm tree puffy stickers, these paper clip bows, as well as these epoxy dots, envelopes, the word fabulous as a word die. This die actually makes a flower and you always get a sentiment stamp set and this one says happy belated birthday, the head forgets but the heart remembers, you're the best ever and get better, hope you are back on your feet real soon. And you also get two ribbon, and this month, Stephanie at the Stamps of Life is throwing in her free gift to all card kit members, and it's this happy birthday word die. And Ken is throwing in his two freebies as well, and mine were the ice cream Sunday dies as well as the flower dies. And everybody might have different freebies than I do as far as the Ken freebies that you saw here. And he will be throwing in two free dies to all card kit members through December of 2020. And I also want to let you know that if you have not joined the card kit club, but you might be interested in joining, on September 1st, they are raising the Card Kit Club prices. So if you join now, your price will be locked in as long as you are a Card Kit Club member. I will be putting a link to the club information website down below so you can take a look at that if you are interested. Now these are the birds to stamp and the more birds to stamp as well as the dies. And this is the August club set for the month and if you have the dies you can use the shadow die and die cut these birds out of these pattern papers and if you don't you can just fussy cut them out it's all the same thing and there are a total of four sheets of these birds that you can die cut which gives you a total of 24 birds that you can use on your cards now I'm only die cutting as you see here the first two sheets because at the time I didn't know if I would use all of the sheets but as we go th as I went through and started making the cards I ended up using additional birds so I did die cut more than what you see here and I love how these die cuts are included in the paper pad because they make for such super easy quick cards I actually took a different approach to this card kit video because I've had many of you ask me how do you design a card what is the process of designing a card I don't know where to start so one place that you can start is by using a card sketch so you'll see in the first few cards that I make that I am going to be using some card sketches now I'm probably not going to do this every video but I did want to bring this to you during this video so that you can easily see how to turn a card sketch into a card and this card sketch that I'm using is Moho Monday if you do a search on Pinterest or just a Google search on card sketches card layouts you'll find many many card layout examples that you can use to make a card so for my first card I am using the Moho Monday sketch 543 and the measurements for the papers that you'll be using is the A2 size in the powdered sugar, that's your card base. The tangerine is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. The bird paper measures three by five and a quarter. The ocean strip is one and a quarter by five and a quarter. The tangerine strip is four by one and a quarter. And the stripe strip is four by one and one eighth. 
I used a stitched circle die that measures two and three quarters in size for the white and then the tangerine is also a circle die which measures two and fifteen sixteenths. So here I'm taking the stripe pattern paper and I'm going to adhere that to the tangerine strip, making sure that it is flush on the left side and only a little bit of the tangerine is showing at the top and bottom of that strip. And then I'm gonna turn it over and snip off the excess. Next, I'm gonna take the ocean strip and I'm gonna add some glue to the back and add it to the right side of the tangerine paper, making sure that a little bit of the tangerine still displays on the right side and at the top and bottom. Then I'm gonna take the bird paper and add some glue to that and add it right next to that ocean strip, again, making sure there's a tangerine border all around. Next, I'm gonna take that striped paper, add some glue to the back and add that towards the bottom of the card layer. Next I'm going to stamp with sentiment on the white circle and it's going to be the large sentiment, um, I really can't read what it says right here, but I'm going to stamp it out. It's the get better, hope that you are back on your feet real soon. So I stamped that out with some forever black ink and I'm using my Missy to do that and I'm glad I did because the impression didn't turn out the first time. So I was able to stamp it again and then I'm going to add that to the tangerine circle and then I'm going to add that tangerine circle to my card and I'm going to add a bird. I'm going to put some double-sided adhesive foam on the bird just so that it's popped up a little bit from the card. So again I'm choosing the bird in the ocean color. It goes along with the color scheme and then that entire card layer will go on the A2 size card base keeping in mind that an A2 size card base is four and a quarter by five and a half and then I finish off this card with the cute little paper clip with the orange bow at the top I think that adds a really nice touch and I think this card turned out super great now it could be used as a masculine card if you take that bow off and you can see how it resembles the um, card sketch that I chose. So I used the paper clip there instead of that piece of cardstock that you see there above the circle. And the strip of paper that's behind the circle, I probably really didn't even need to use that because you really can't see it after I added the bird. So here's an example of how you can turn a card sketch into a completed card. For this next card, I'm going with the MFT card sketch, which is MFT WSC 235. So I have an A2 size card base in powdered sugar. The grape layer is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. The cherry layer is three and three eighths by five and three eighths. The powdered sugar layer is three and a quarter by five and three eighths. The grape birdhouse pattern paper measures three and one eighth by five and three eighths. I will start out by adhering the powdered sugar piece directly to the cherry piece, making sure it's flush at the top and bottom, and only a little bit of the cherry cardstock shows on the right and left side. Next, I'll do the same thing with the birdhouse pattern paper, put some glue on the back, and adhere that directly to the top of the powdered sugar cardstock piece, making sure it's flush at the top and bottom, with only a little bit of the cardstock showing on the left and right. Now, if for some reason any extra extends beyond, just take your scissors and just trim off the excess, because the top should be flush. All of those papers should be flush at the top and bottom. And then adhere that directly in the middle of the solid grape cardstock piece. Next, I'm gonna use my Misty and the Wreath to Stamp stamp set. I'm gonna use some green apple ink and ink up that wreath um, on some powdered sugar cardstock. And I'm gonna do this twice. So I'm gonna have two identical wreaths because I figured that if I, I mean, you could technically use one wreath, but adding two just adds more dimension to the wreath. So that's why I chose to add two wreaths. And I love using my Misty because I can ink this up as much as I want for a much darker impression. So once that's inked up, I use my matching dies and I line it up and I die cut both of these wreaths out. And then I add some glue to the back and I will go ahead and adhere each one to the card front. 
And I love how that cherry cardstock just slightly shows on the left and right side of that strip because that's going to add a nice contrast for the pink flowers and the pink bird that I'm going to add to this card front. So here I used this die that came in the kit and this actually makes a flower. So I kind of slowed this down a little bit just so that you can see that you just start at the end and you just start rolling it up. And this first one that I made I just started rolling it and then I decided I better add some glue here. So I just added a couple of dots every now and then I'll just add some dots and this is the first time I've actually rolled up a flower like this. So I would say that the first one was not as great as the second and third one that I did but it still turned out really good and I realized that I probably should have added some glue at the very beginning when I started rolling this up. I mean it didn't come apart at all I just think that it would would have added um, you know more security for this flower as you roll it and this bottom piece here will just go right underneath and that's what you'll put glue on to adhere that to your um, card so if you wanted to spread the petals out you can kind of stick your nails in there and kind of spread them apart but I think it turned out super cute in the end I went ahead and did two more of these and like I said my second and third one turned out much better so again you start out at the end and then start rolling it up here you can see that I added glue to every one of those little um, scallop pieces and it just I to me it just makes it more secure as you're rolling up this flower and I think I also rolled it much tighter um, I don't know I just I just ended up liking the second one much better and you can see how I have my thumb underneath at the bottom just holding the bottom so that it stays flat and then I have another finger on the top holding that together so finger on the top and a finger at the bottom as I roll through that scallop piece to create this cute little flower so here adding glue to the last three scallops and then that last one will again just fit at the very bottom of that just hold your thumb on there press it down and you, there is some glue spots that show on this flower but it dries clear so it really doesn't matter and then I did another one just the same way and then I just added some cherry um, ink to the tops and the edges of that just to add some more depth and dimension to those flowers so now I'm just positioning everything where I want it to go and I end up die cutting these little green leaves and these are from the wreath dies there's a little leaf die in there and I just die cut those leaves out of the green apple cardstock so to adhere those flowers just put glue at the very bottom of each one of those flowers and then press it down with your finger just to hold it so that glue dries and I'm using a pretty strong glue it's the art glitter glue so it does dry pretty quick and dries pretty strong now these flowers have a lot of dimension so as far as putting this type of card in an envelope I think you might have some issues with all of the dimension that is included with these flowers this might if you're using those flowers this might be more of something that you hand deliver to somebody and I went ahead and added some foam on this bird to make him stand up a little bit on this card again adding some more dimension and then I'm going to be using this happy belated birthday stamp but I didn't want the word belated in there so I decided I'm going to cut that out and you can cut your stamps and I just cut that word out and then stamped out happy birthday with some cherry ink just on some white cardstock and then just trimmed that down using my paper trimmer and then I'm just going to add a strip of a double-sided adhesive foam to the back of the sentiment and add that sentiment to the front of this card layer and then that entire card layer will go on the top of an A2 size card base in the powdered sugar and that completes this card so you can see how this card resembles this card sketch so you have the cardstock going down the middle and then the circle is my wreath and then the sentiment I kind of move the sentiment down towards the bottom just modify the card sketch just a little bit and that completes this card this next card I'm using the same card sketch that I used in the previous card only I'm going to modify it slightly so my card base is an A2 size in the powdered sugar I have a grape cardstock layer which measures four and an eighth by five and three eighth 
the fabulous pattern paper measures four by five and a quarter and then I have two hearts that I die cut out of the dotted heart dies a larger one out of the grape and then one size just smaller than that one out of the striped pattern paper and those will, will layer on top of each other and then I'm also going to be bringing in these two birds so I'm starting out by adhering the fabulous paper directly to the grape cardstock layer and then I'm going to adhere these hearts one on top of the other. And then I'm going to take my grape ribbon and I'm going to, to tie it around this entire cardstock layer and I'm tying it in a knot and then just snipping off the ends. And then this heart layer is going to go right there on top of the card and the birds are going to be facing each other. So before I add all those pieces down, I'm going to stamp out a sentiment and the sentiment is you are a tweet heart and this is from the more birds to stamp stamp set. So I just stamped that out with some forever black ink and I'm going to take a rectangle die and die cut that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my heart and add my birds to the inside of the heart. And then I'm going to take my sentiment and I'm just going to add some grape ink to the edges of that. And that is going to go directly on top of that ribbon off to the left as you see it there. And that entire card layer is going to go on an A2 size card base in the powdered sugar. And then I decide to go ahead and add some glue behind that ribbon just to make sure that stays in place and add a few epoxy dots. Now these aren't the epoxy dots that came with the card kit. I just thought that those would be a little bit too blingy for this card. So that completes this card and here's the card sketch and you can see how it's different a little bit. I did use the sentiment but I put the sentiment down towards the bottom with a uh, ribbon that goes across. The circle shape on the card sketch I used a heart shape instead and then instead of shortening my cardstock on the sides I used a full piece of pattern paper that extended to the edges. So again that completes this card. For my next card I'm going to be using the Sweet Sunday Sketch 268 which looks like this. I am using an A2 size card base and powdered sugar. The red or the strawberry paper measures three and three quarter by five and then I have a stitched rectangle die for the polka dot paper and if you don't have a stitched rectangle die you can just cut a piece of pattern paper three and five eighths by four and seven eighths because that is the size of that polka dot paper. I'm also using another stitched rectangle die for the small polka dot paper and that actually measures four and one sixteenths by two and thirteen sixteenths. My strawberry layer measures four and three sixteenths by two and five sixteenths. So I'm going to go ahead and start adhering these layers so the smaller rectangles will be adhered together and then the larger rectangles will be adhered together. And then I'm going to take the larger rectangle and adhere that to my card base and that's going to go on completely straight whereas the smaller rectangle is kind of going to be tilted or angled off to the side. And I am going to be using the green bird as well as the happy birthday die that came with the card kit. I really love the font of this happy birthday die. I did die cut the shadow layer with the strawberry card stock and then the actual letters with the white powdered sugar and then I'm just going to adhere that towards the bottom of that layer. And then I'll add the bird. But before I add the bird, I am going to be using this party hat die that I die cut with the party hat triplets die set that Stephanie designed when she was working for her old company. And um, Stamps of Life does not sell this particular die. But if you are interested in this particular die, you can probably do a search on Google and see if, if any other places sell it. I think scrapbook.com may sell it. But you can also um, go to the Stamps of Life website. They do have other stamp sets that include party hat dies. Um, the Hats for Critters set is one of them. And Birthday for Cookie is another. And after I add this, I'm looking at the card, I'm thinking, wow, this party hat is really big. And I almost feel like it's too big for this bird, but I went ahead and glued it down anyway, so there was not taking it up, because if I took it up, it would kind of mess up the cardstock. So I just went with it. So 
you can kind of see how this kind of resembles this card sketch. I modified it slightly so when the happy birthday takes the place of that long strip and I used the bird to take the place of the smaller rectangle that's on top. This next card I'm using the Sweet Sunday Sketch 286 and instead of going in the portrait direction I am actually going to make this a landscape card and I'm using an A2 size card base and that is in powdered sugar with a piece of cherry cardstock that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. The floral pattern paper measures four by five and a quarter and then I have a scalloped die in cherry and I have a stitched circle in sunshine and that stitched circle is a three and a quarter inch circle and that scalloped circle is the second largest scallop circle in the die set so I adhered the yellow paper to the cherry um, scalloped circle and I also die cut these tropical flowers out of the ocean and the strawberry card stock and I loved how these flowers match the pattern paper and this is from the tropical to stamp dies so here I was just kind of placing everything I am going to be using the fabulous word die and I just kind of placed the die there and everything where I wanted it just to make sure I had enough room before I adhered the scallop circle down so you can see I had the scallop circle where I wanted it and then I just flipped the layer over and added a line to that circle so I knew where to put my glue and notice that it is hanging off of that pattern paper which is fine because that was the whole intention and then I'm going to trim off the excess there so and now it's just a partial scalloped circle and then I'm just going to kind of lay everything again where I want everything to go I am using that pink bird and I'm going to go ahead and use my strawberry ink to ink up the edges of the red flower and then I'm going to use the ocean ink to ink up the edges of the um, flower in the ocean color and again I'm just going to place everything where I want it to go I am using the shadow die for fabulous because I haven't die cut that out yet because I didn't know what colors I was going to be using so I just wanted to make sure that the flowers weren't going to go over top of the words so that's why I just laid everything out there so I am not using the shadow dies for these flowers I just want to adhere them flat to the card I mean, if you wanted to, you can use a shadow die. They do come with the shadow dies. If you wanted to just add glue to the centers and have those petals have dimension, you can do that. But I just wanted to keep it simple and just adhere them flat. I took those flower dies again and I also die cut them out of the white cardstock to have a white middle because if you look at the pattern paper I wanted those flowers to be identical to that pattern paper and the ones in the pattern paper have the white middle so I did that for both of those flowers next I took some double-sided adhesive foam and I added it to the back of the bird because I did want the bird to have some dimension there like it was sitting on top of the flowers I decided to die cut the shadow layer of the fabulous die out of just the white cardstock and then I added some black cardstock from my stash for the word fabulous. I did have double sided adhesive tape on the back of that before running it through the die cut. You can see how intricate those letters are. Now for the stamp set I'm using the Squirrels to Love stamp set because it has a stamp in there that says you are special to me and I wanted the you are so I'm just masking off the part of the stamp that I did not want with washi tape and then I inked it up with my forever black ink removed the washi tape and then stamped it down on some powdered sugar cardstock and then just trimmed that up and we'll add that to my card as well as the word fabulous. I'm going to take that entire card layer and add that to my cherry cardstock layer. And then I'm going to position the word you are so that it is flush with the flower paper and there are still a little bit of that cherry paper showing on the left side of that. And then um, add both that and the fabulous to my cardstock piece. I am using the sunglass dies from the sunglasses to stamp and I die cut the small sunglasses out of the cherry cardstock as well as out of the licorice cardstock for the lenses. And I just added those there to the bird and then add some bling there to that card layer and then that will add that to my A2 size card base. 
And the last thing I do for this card is I take my Spectrum Sparkle Glitter Pen and I just go over these flowers with some of the glitter pen. I just think it adds a nice touch making these flowers a little sparkly and I also go over the word fabulous and add some glitter to that as well. So you can kind of see how the card sketch is modified. So instead of going in the portrait direction, I kind of turned it landscape and did the same thing. So you can see my scallop is going off the side of the page. And instead of using that long strip underneath the circle, I just used a word die in place of that. So that completes this card. For this next card, I'm using Sweet Sunday Sketch 298, which you see here. And I'm starting out with a piece of powdered sugar cardstock in the A2 size. The strawberry paper is 4 and an eighth by 5 and 3 eighths. The fabulous paper is 4 by 5 and a quarter. The strawberry square paper measures 3 by 3, and the polka dot square measures 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths. I'm also using the ribbon die from the Stamps of Life, and I die cut three ribbon strips in the sunshine paper. So I'm going ahead and using my glue, adding that glue to the back of these strips of yellow cardstock. And I'm going to position all three of these strips in a straight line across the bottom of this fabulous paper. Now if you recall, the card sketch had these going kind of in a diagonal, but I chose to put them in a straight line and then I just turned that card layer over and snipped off the excess paper and then added the polka dot paper to the top of the strawberry square and I decide that I'm going to use this in a diamond shape rather than as a square shape. Well, it's a square shape, but decide that I'm going to have the point at the top. I am going to use a sentiment from the stamp set and I am going to stamp that up in forever black ink there onto the left of the um, diamond shape so I'm going to go ahead and position everything here where I want it. That red bird I'm using to complement the strawberry cardstock piece. And that's going to go there towards the right side of that sentiment. So now I'm going to glue everything down. So the diamond shape is going to be more towards the right side of that layer. And add that entire layer to my strawberry layer. And then add that bird there right next to the sentiment gluing that down. If you wanted to add foam, you can to add some dimension. That's up to you. And I am just going to bring in a couple of these palm trees and then add that entire card layer to my A2 size card base in powdered sugar. And that will complete this card. So here is the card next to the card sketch that I chose. You can see that I replaced the flowers in the card sketch with the palm trees. I do have the strips as you see here, only mine are going straight and the ones in the card sketch are going in a diagonal shape. Instead of using a large rectangle on the left, I chose to use a square shape on the right. For these last three cards, I am not using a card sketch. I wanted to create some fun, um, themed type cards, I guess with more of a scene, um, especially this one with the scene. I also wanted to use the bird cage, fold it in my next card, which you'll see coming up. So there's no card sketch for these last three, but I hope that that gave you a good idea of where you can start if your mind has gone blank. So for this card, I am using my sky ink. I'm also using Bristol Smooth cardstock and I am using a cloud stencil. This is actually a stencil that I made out of a cloud border die. So I just die cut a piece of white cardstock. It could be any color cardstock and I die cut it out of a cloud border and then I'm using it here as a stencil. So I'm just using my sky ink. Notice that I keep going down every line. I go down and then I ink blend the next line, go down, ink blend the next line and create this fun cloud background. And I did do my um, design team project for the Birds to Stamp Club set using a method similar to this. And I created a slimline card. So in case you missed it, I will link that below. 
So this layer was cut to 5 by 7 in size, but when I'm done ink blending it, I actually take my paper trimmer and I cut it down to 4 and 7 eighths by 6 and 7 eighths because this will be the layer that's going on top of my card base. And I trimmed it down a little bit because I wanted to get rid of some of the harsh blue lines on the edges of the cardstock from the ink blending. Now this layer is going to go on a 5 by 7 card base because I am using the tree fold it die and this die set makes a 5 by 7 card but I'm not making it in the shape of a card. I'm actually going to put it on a card base. So I brought in some brown cardstock from my stash. I am using the green apple cardstock from the card kit and I took that die that you just saw there and I just die cut out these pieces that you see me ink inking up with the green apple ink. After I inked up the edges, I just took that ink dabber and I just put some ink on the top of that cardstock as well, just to add some dimension. So you can see me just inking up the top just to add some more texture there. I also took a border die. It came from the same border die set as the cloud die that I used as the stencil and I die cut a piece of green apple cardstock for the grass and I, I inked up the edges as you saw and that's going to go towards the bottom of this card layer. So I'm just going to add some glue and add that flat to the card layer and then I'm going to turn that over and I will trim off the excess cardstock. And then I'm going to start placing everything where I want it to go on this card layer. And to make sure that I don't lose my place I'm going to use a pencil and just trace the bottom of this bark and just trace it so that I know where to place it when I add my glue and then position it back on this card layer and then just take your pencil and erase the pencil marks. And then I can do the same thing with the tree bush at the top. So just trace it and then be able to place it where I want it to go. Now this little piece that you see me playing with here, I actually die cut that out twice. I die cut one which actually had a little mess up on it so I put that underneath, glued it flat to the cardstock and then I took the second one and I added some foam tape to give it some dimension so it actually has a bush that's sticking out on the tree to add some dimension there. And then the third piece which was the extra tree bush die that came with the die set. I just added it flat towards the top of that tree. I am using the Be Fearless Sentiment and this is from the Fearless Sentiments that the Stamps of Life had on HSN. And I also am using the flowers that came as my free gift and I die cut them out of some purple and some yellow cardstock as well as some of the green apple and I'm just layering these flowers up to give them different colors and you can see that my bird I chose the red to match the red in the be fearless sentiment and notice that he is going to be upside down on that branch I just think that's going to be so cute be fearless and him swinging upside down <laughs> So I'm going to add two flowers. I was thinking about adding a third, but these flowers are so large and there was really no room for them. So, or I should say no room for a third one. So I just added the two there and I thought that the purple will brought out purple brought out some additional colors to this card. So I thought that was really nice. And obviously the yellow in the flower matched the bird's feet. So I'm going to add that entire card layer to my card base. This is a 5 by 7 card base that I just got at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I don't even know where. And then just added some of those epoxy dots to the inside of those flowers. And that will complete this card. For this next card, I'm using the Birdcage Fold It die set that also came out this month. And I'm using a piece of Ocean cardstock and I'm adding some double sided adhesive tape to the back of that before I run this through my die cut machine. Because when this comes out of the die cut machine, those little lines on that birdcage are going to be so intricate that you're not going to want to try and add double sided adhesive to those lines. So when that comes out, you can see all these pieces that come out, which those you can save. Let's, let's say you wanted to die cut some flowers or something. You can use those as just scrap papers. I used the large shadow die to die cut that flower pattern paper. And now I'm taking the actual birdcage um, die 
the cardstock that came from that die. And I'm just removing the double-sided adhesive and I'm going to add that to that floral paper. Now my birds are going to be on the outside of this bird cage, but if you wanted to have your birds on the inside, you'd have to put your birds down now before you add that bird cage to the front of that floral print. I'm going to be bringing in this love sentiment and this is from the Stamps of Life slimline add-on words and I have the shadow layer cut out of the powdered sugar and then the word love cut out of the strawberry and I'm going to take these two birds and they're going to look like they're standing on the um, sentiment and facing each other. I think that would be so cute. So I'm going to go ahead and add some glue and add those there to the front of the bird cage. Now to make this into an A2 size card, just take a piece of powdered sugar cardstock, fold it in half, place a large shadow die just slightly to the left of that fold in your cardstock and run it through your die cutting machine and then just glue this top layer directly on top of that card base. Now by this time I ran out of all my powdered sugar cardstock in my card kit so this is from my stash. And there is your card. And now, actually, I decided after the fact that I was going to go in and just add some flowers to the top of this birdcage just to add a little bit more something to it. So I took these flowers from the Toucan to Stamp dies. These are some smaller tropical flowers. In a previous card that I did, I don't remember what number it was. It was the one with the sunglasses that I used, the tropical to stamp dies. Those were much larger flowers, and these are much smaller. I wanted to go with something smaller here. So I just die cut two flowers out of the sunshine paper and one out of the strawberry paper, and I'm just adhering them to the top of this birdcage just to add a little more something to this card. And that will complete this card. For this next card, I'm using the A2 Swirl card die set from the Stamps of Life, and I'm using a piece of green apple cardstock from my card base in A2 in size. I'm also taking this tangerine paper, and I'm lining up these dies. In that die set, there's a large rectangle die, and then there's these two smaller dies, and then the larger die at the bottom, and I'm just lining them up how I want this grid to appear on my card front, and just using some washi tape to tape those together and run that through the die cut machine and you get this nice little grid that you can use for your card front. And I love using these grid dies from the Stamps of Life because you can just create cute little scenes and there's really not much to thinking about how you're going to design your card because you can just use pattern paper and put some stamps in there and you have a card basically. So now I'm taking these polka dot um, pattern paper and I'm taking the square and these rec I should say the rectangle dies and die cutting those out of the polka dot pattern paper. Those are going to be the insides of my grid. Next I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to the back of the grid and add that to the card front and I'm going to do the same thing with the polka dot paper and add those to the inside of the grid. I'm also going to be bringing in two birds and I'm going to be using the happy birthday die set that came free with the um, Stamps of Life card kit and I make a lot of birthday cards. I think birthday cards are the cards that I make the most so I'm really happy that it included the card kit included this happy birthday die set. I'm also taking this loopy border that came with the July card kit if you guys um, remember last month um, it included this border die and I thought that this would be cute just to add a little something extra to this card front. So I just die cut it there out of the strawberry. I thought I was going to do the yellow but I decided to go with the strawberry instead and just add it underneath the word happy birthday. So I'm just going to glue everything down and that's going to end up completing this card. So again, these dies from the Stamps of Life that make these grids, number one, they make for really quick, easy cards because you don't have to do much thinking about how you're going to make a card. Just kind of you know, put the grid together and then take your stamps, plug your stamps in each of these grids. If you have a sentiment, plug it in um, and then voila, you have a card. It's also a great way of adding, of using up your pattern paper because with the little grid 
portions, the little rectangular portions of this die set, you can just use your scraps to use up your pattern paper to make a card. For my last card, I'm using the square Flip It, and I'm using a piece of the Mint Chip cardstock for the card base. And I'm using this really pretty striped pattern paper for the side panels. And Flip It cards are another great way of making quick and easy cards because all of the dies to make your card are included in the set. Just find the paper that you love and use that as your layering pieces. And again, super quick, easy card. So here I'm just adding the pattern paper to the actual card base. When you make a Flip It card, keep in mind that the smaller panel is always on the left and the larger panel is always on the right. So included in this die set is a square die, which I went ahead and die cut this pattern paper, as you see here. And I'm gonna stamp out the large sentiment the Get Better sentiment onto one of these pieces. And that piece is actually going to go on the back side of my Flip It card. This square Flip It die set also comes with this little border square die that you see there laying on the table. So I'm taking a piece of Ocean cardstock and I'm die cutting that square die. And what I want to do is actually create a frame and layer this on that yellow pattern paper. So I'm taking a smaller square die that's just slightly smaller than that border that it imprinted on that um, cardstock. And I just die cut that out of the same piece of cardstock and it gave me um, this nice border. So I can actually put this bird behind it because I wanted to create kind of like a frame. So here I'm going to go ahead and add my bird to the yellow pattern paper. And I'm going to snip off the bottom and then I realize that as I'm pulling back the adhesive and I'm getting ready to add this to my bird is that this square is slightly smaller and you can see the actual bird's legs. So I have to come back in here and pull up the bottom of the bird and just trim off a little bit more because I only wanted the yellow part showing around the edges of that border. So then just add this border to that square and it will look like the bird is peeking out of a little frame. I just thought that was so cute. <laughs> I love how he's just peeking out of the little window. And then I'm going to add that to the front of this Flip It card. And this Flip It card also came with, the, actually say the Flip It card die set came with these flowers. So I went ahead and die cut some of these flowers out of the ocean, the sunshine, and the cherry cardstock and just inked up the edges with their corresponding inks. And I was just going to add a cluster of flowers at the top right and at the bottom left and also add one to the frame. After I add all those flowers, I take the ribbon from the card kit and just tie a little knot around the left side panel of that Flip It card. And then I take one of the epoxy dots and some hot glue and add it right to the center. The last thing I do is add some Nuvo Crystal Drops in the dandelion yellow color to the centers of those flowers. And I love these Nuvo Drops because they actually dry um, hard. It just takes a little while for them to dry and then once they dry, they dry hard like enamel dots. And that is a super quick and easy Flip It card. So once again, here are all of the 10 cards that I designed with the Stamps of Life August card kit. And I really hope that the card sketches helped you kind of see where to start in the planning stages of a card. Again, I don't think that I'm going to use those in all of the videos that I create. I just wanted to kind of throw this out there because I know some of you had some questions on, you know, how do you create a card. So I hope that helped. And let me know what your favorite was. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those below. Be sure to subscribe for more card making tutorials from me and have a great day everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.